morning. Welcome to Spring of Water Christian Assembly. Oh, how we give God thanks for another day. I am extremely excited to be sharing the Word of God with you on today. Our message today is actually part two of the message shared last week, entitled Using what has been proven using what has been proven. And I shared with you about David refusing to use Saul's armor, his shield and his sword. Instead, David used what he had proven, a sling and a few small stones. And with that, he brought down the giant Goliath and gave victory to Israel over the Philistines. And you can have the victory on today. And so if you go with me in the service, I'm going to continue to share with you how you can use what has been proven down through the centuries by men and women of God, both in the Bible and in the world today, who have received the victory by using weapons that has been proven. So go with me now into the service and God bless you. God, we love you today. God, you are righteous, hallelujah. God, you are worthy, hallelujah. God, you are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be exalted. You are worthy to be lifted up. We declare, oh God, that you reign in this nation. You reign in this place. You reign in this house that is spring of water today. You reign in each and every place where your children are lifting you up and are declaring that you are God and you are God alone. And so day, today, Lord, we thank you. We thank you for the blessing of being in your presence, O oh Lord. We thank you for the blessing of salvation. We thank you for the blessing of Calvary. And we thank you, Lord God, for Jesus Christ, who came that we may have life and life abundantly. We commit this service unto you today, Lord God, and we give you worship freely on today, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We're going to enter in a time of celebration for the victory that we declared through the blessings that we just released. Hallelujah. The song simply says, victory is mine. Can you help me sing that this morning? Hallelujah. Anybody got victory this morning? Oh, I feel like I am almost in the presence of a victorious people. I'm simply asking, do any of you receive the victory that is in this house on today? Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. I told Satan, get thee behind. Victory today is mine. Oh, victory is, is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. I told Satan, get thee behind. Victory today is mine. Put your hands together. I 
mine, victory is mine, victory today is mine. I saw Satan, I saw, get thee behind it, victory, victory. Oh, Lord, I thank you, Lord, I bless you, I lift up your name above her name. If I have thousand tongues, there will not be enough to sing praises unto you. Thank you for your family. Thank you for your family. Thank you for your children. Thank you for your family. Your children. Your children. You don't even know where they go. You know they go some places, but you don't even know where they have gone to. You don't even know where the sole of their feet treaded. Yet God was with them. God was protecting them. God was guiding them. When they fall, God carries them in his hands. When they walk through fire, it never kindled up against them. When they walk through waters, it never overflowed them. That is God that we serve. That is God that we serve. Thank you for making provisions for you. Yes. Yes, yes, God is making provision for you. He's meeting all your needs. You may not get what you want, but you get what you need from God. He gives you health. He heals your body. That is God. God put food on your table. Uh, let me just quickly try to share the word of God with you. A continuation of last week's message. I know some of you weren't here, so I'll do a little bit of recap and try to get to where God wants us to go today. But last week, I shared with you a message entitled, Use What Has Been Proven. Use what has been proven. Praise the name of the Lord. Father, we give you thanks. We give you praise. We've come to the place of learning. We have come to the place of enlightenment. For your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. And when we open your word, Lord God, we hear directly from heaven. The blindfolds are removed. The shackles are broken. Opportunities are made available to us. We are blessed beyond reason. And for this we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. And some things I shared with you last week, I'll just try to remind those of you who are here. Hallelujah. And God is saying that another way of putting the message, God is really saying, use what works. Amen. Use what have been proven means use what works. And I shared with you that this nation of America What's destroying us, it's not primarily from the inside, but from what's on the outside. The scammers, they're here. But they can't be compared to the sophistication of the scammers out there. Where people in far remote places 
can empty your uh, account with the click of a mouse. Amen. <laughs> Unless a mouse no trap can catch. And part of the reason is you're going online and you're buying from stores that don't even exist. You're calling folks friends who don't care about you. Come on now, church. I know I'm speaking the truth. The ills of America. We're celebrating our independence. But the question is, are we really free? When someone in Bangladesh or Bucharest, amen, can manipulate your life, are we really free? Amen. We have gone through the bondage of slavery. But here, on the 4th of July, 2022, we find ourselves in the bondage of technology, a more dangerous form of slavery. Some folks are so enslaved to technology, the trains are running over them when they're driving over the train track because they're not listening for the train. They're getting hit and killed in the middle of the road because they are enslaved to technology. Are we really free? And then in addition to that, so many are enslaved by addiction. All kinds of addiction. Praise the name of the Lord. On this July 4th, 2022, and we're going to hear it sung again. The land of the free and the home of the brave. But when we cannot defend ourselves technologically, are we, are we really the home of the brave and the land of the free? Praise God. And one of our biggest mistake as a society. We form relationships with people we have not proven. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap today. You meet him or her At midnight, at the nightclub. And what do they say about midnight at the nightclub? Every guy looks handsome and every girl looks pretty. Come on now. Folks walk out with some ugly folks. <laughs> Let me move on. <laughs> but, you know, we're supposed to speak the truth in church. Amen. And God wants us to use what's been proven, form relationships with people that have proved their integrity, their honesty, 
their character. You have a lot of scammers out there. And people are losing everything. Because you take things at face value. You buy stuff that doesn't work. You buy cars that you never had checked out. And now they tow it to you. Really? You don't buy a car in the dealership anymore. Did you know that? You just order the car. It comes. They drop it off. My new car. You sign the check. You pay it over. Now the car won't even start. We have moved away from testing. Now, if I said last week, if God asked us to test him, even when his word said, don't test me, didn't God say in Malachi chapter 3 and 10, bring your tithe into my storehouse and prove me. So if God asked us to prove him, why are we hesitating in proving others? Why are we so gullible? Amen? Why are we getting heartbroken? Why is it not working out? You didn't test it to see if it works. Use what has been proven. Praise the name of the Lord. You know, I was working in the hospital, and someone was sharing with me that they went downtown right in front of Jordan Marsh that sells TV. And a guy was outside the store selling televisions. And he had the TV on display with the remote flicking and people buying televisions in a box. And she shared with me, I took the television home Rock stones were in the box with newspaper. Money gone. Didn't stop to even open the box. Because somebody says there's a television in the box. So how do we put this in a spiritual context? Last week we went to 1 Kings chapter 17. 30, 1 Samuel, I'm sorry, chapter 17. Can we put that on the overhead? We're going to make this quick this week. Just want to wrap it up for you. 1 Samuel, chapter 17. Amen. And verse 38. Verse 38. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Just put your finger there for a second. Can you put that on the overhead? 1 Samuel chapter 17. We're going to read from the, verse 38, maybe to 50. Amen? And so the background of the story is this. That Israel was at war with the Philistines. And the way Old Testament wars were fought back then, one uh, nation would, would select uh, an individual, a warrior, to go fight the warrior of the other nation. And it was so that whoever, you know, won that battle, the other, the, the nation that, that lost the battle would serve the nation that won. And so the Philistines sent forth Goliath, a giant, 
a giant to war against Israel. And Goliath was so, so mighty, so big, so tall that, that the king of Israel and the people of Israel feared Goliath. And I shared with you last week, in doing some research, I discovered that Saul, the king, was the tallest man in Israel. And so I double-checked to find out who is the tallest man in the United States. The, you know, every country have the record of the tallest person. So if Saul was the tallest man, we got to figure out how tall was this man. So in my research, the, I discovered that in the United States, back in, I think in 1918, there was a man called, he was born in Illinois, is, uh, and um, his name is Robert Wadlow, born February 22, 1918, died July 15, 1940. He was born in Alton, Illinois. You know what they called him? Alton the Giant. He was eight feet six inches tall. So when I read, that Saul stood above everyone else. And you can read that in 1 Kings chapter 9, somewhere there. He stood above everyone else in Israel. It could have been that they called Saul, you know, giant Saul. Quite possible, right? Or, or the giant of Israel. Not only was he king, but he stood taller. The man was a giant himself. But he was afraid of Goliath. And so Goliath came on the battlefield and challenged the children of Israel and disdained the God of Israel. Amen? And so David overheard as he came to serve lunch to his brethren on the battlefield. He overheard how Goliath was discrediting the God of Israel. And so the Bible says David is a man after God's own heart. Goliath says, send me a man. And David says, who, who are you? That you would come up against the God of Israel. And so word got to Saul of David's bravery. I'm just paraphrasing, moving the story along. And so David came before Saul. And proved to Saul that he could fight Goliath and win. Because he shared with Saul how while taking care of his father's sheep, a lion and a bear came up against the sheep. And he says, with my bare hands, I killed the lion. And the bear. And the lion had a, a sheep in his mouth. And I, with my hand, I ripped the sheep out of the lion's mouth. And he proved that he was a warrior. He proved that he could fight and win. Praise the name of the Lord. And church, you need... To know who you are in God. David knew exactly who he was in God. And David knew what weapon to fight Goliath with. And when Saul tried to equip David with his armor, his sword and his shield, David realized that, you know what, I've not proven this, Saul. And that's where we pick up in verse 38. Can we read? Read aloud, read aloud. And Saul armed David with his armor. And he put a helmet of brass upon his head. Poor David. Also he, harm, he armed him with a coat of mail. Amen. This big heavy stuff. Hallelujah. Next verse. And David girded his sword upon his armor. And he essayed to go, so, you know, he girded up the sword 
that Saul gave him. And he has said to go. In other words, he says, he says, I can't go. I haven't tested this. Hallelujah. I haven't proven it. For he had not proved it. And David said unto Saul, read aloud, I cannot go with these, for I have not proved them. And David put off him. Why are you signing contracts with people and you have not proven their workmanship? Why are you forming relationships with people and you don't even know if the name that they gave you is, is, is their name? And they give Sally one name and Jane another name and Barbara. They give another name. And they just float the names around. If they call you Ronald, call me. If they say they're Ronald, you call me. Okay. <laughs> but you, you, you follow what I mean? David says, I've not proved. Are you proving the spirit? Is not what the word of God says. Am I right? Amen. Try the spirit. Prove the spirit to know if they are of God. Amen. Prove the spirit. Oh, I work at State Street Bank. I make, what do you, how, how do they say it now? How many digits? Six figures. I make six figures. Show me your paycheck. Amen. Show me your license. Oh, I was born in the USA. Show me your birth certificate. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. Test the spirit. And that's a big mistake of our nation. And that's why we are where we are. We put people in power and we don't even know what they believe. We vote because the name sounds like ours. Am I right? Oh, you sound like he's a Jamaican. <laughs> Amen. I think he's an African like me. And you'll be amazed to know we put people in power, and we know nothing about them. And when their true colors come out, we have regrets. Come on, church. Come on. I'm, it's July 4th. I'm just telling you the truth. Praise the Lord. Amen. We never took the time to check out their credentials. Praise God. Hallelujah. David checked out Saul's armor. Next verse. And so you will find, and he took his staff. See, now, now David knew what worked. And you need to know what worked. Amen. And, and I'm here to tell you today that the word of God works every time. Come on now, church. No matter what men may say. The word of God works every time. They may say you can't read it anymore in school, but it still works. Listen, prayer still works. The name of Jesus still works. The blood still works. The Holy Ghost still works. And we need to learn to know what works and what doesn't work. So you don't be fooled. So you don't be gypped. So you don't be taken advantage of. So you won't be deceived. And let me tell you, if you will do everything according to this word, 
Do you hear what I'm saying? If you will form the relationships with those who know the word. Praise the name of the Lord. Then it will work out. Hallelujah. Then you form a relationship with the person that God has for you. Because he says light and dark cannot mix. Are you with me? Isn't that the word of God? What does light have to do with darkness? Praise the name of the Lord. How do you try to form the relationship? Um, Pastor, I'll get into church. You'll, you'll meet him one day. You'll meet him one day. The next Sunday, I don't see you anymore. Huh? Took you out the church. And some folks here know what I'm talking about because they've met people like that. But because God had a hold on them, they're right back. But don't make the same mistake. Praise the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Bless your name. So David chose himself five smooth stones, read aloud, out of the brook, and put them in a shepherd's bag, which he had, even in a script, and his sling was in his hand, and he drew near to the Philistines. You see, he had confidence in what worked. And when you check things out, the purpose for checking it out, check out the warranty, check out the manufacturer, check out who he is, where he was born, who know him, who know her. Is the bank, the bank he say he bank with, is it real? Is the job real? Is the car his or hers? Amen. Check it out. Hallelujah. David knew what worked. And the sling was in his hand and he drew near to the Philistines. Go to the next verse. And you're going to find out David's most powerful weapon. Amen. So I'm not telling you go fight your giant with a sling and a few stones. Amen. That's not what I'm telling you to do. But what works? Listen. And the Philistines came on and drew near. Read aloud with me. Unto David. And the man that bear the shield went before him. Next verse. Next verse, let's put, and when the Philistines looked about and saw David, he disdained him, for he was but a youth and ruddy and of fair countenance. So, you know, you're a child. I went through that last week. What can you do? Amen. And the Philistines said unto David, Am I a dog that thou comest to me with staves? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. Amen. Next verse. And the Philistine said to David, Come to me, and I will give thy flesh unto the fowls of the air and to the beasts of the field. Listen, when you use what works, you don't have to be intimidated by the words of man. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap in here today. I said, when you know how to use what works, you don't have to be fearful of man's words. Amen. Hallelujah. For words can't really harm you. Praise God. They ruffle up your emotion a little bit. But the person's words should never knock you to the ground. You shouldn't have a heart attack because somebody spoke to you. Amen. Hallelujah. The Bible says the weapon of our warfare, they're not carnal, but they're mighty in God for the pulling down of stronghold. Know your weapons. Know what works. Know how to fight. Know what to fight with. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap. We're getting ready to wrap it up. 
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Next verse, please. Next verse. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Read aloud. Then said David to the Philistines, listen now, thou comest to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield. Listen to this. But I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts. Hallelujah. The name of the Lord of hosts. You got it? That weapon works all the time, every time, everywhere, anywhere. For at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue must confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Those in the heavens, those in the earth, and those beneath the earth must confess. There's power in the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus has been proven. When the sick man was lying at Gate Beautiful, Peter and John were passing by. And the Bible said they asked of Peter and John, the man asked for an arm. They didn't give the man what the man wanted. They gave the man what could heal him? Silver and gold have I not, but what have I give I unto thee in the name of Jesus? Rise up and walk. Rise up and walk. They didn't dibble-dabble, church. They didn't try some simmy, simmy, sassy, sassy. They didn't burn no candles. They didn't roll any rosary beads. Say amen, somebody. They didn't light up any incense and call on the name of the moon god, the sun god, the rain god. When it rain, I'll come back. Silver and gold have I not, but what have I give I unto you? The name of Jesus. The name of Jesus has been proven from generation to generation. Jesus says, whatever you ask in my name, that will I do. Praise the name of the Lord. We're getting ready to close. But you got to know what works. Amen. And some folks rely on other people to work for them. You know, I'm from Jamaica, and I'll tell you something, how I grew up. You want a driver's license? You don't go learn to drive. When I was growing up. You know a man who know a man. Truth be told. Truth be told. And we all went looking for a man who know a man. And sometimes that man, to, he knows another man. And by the time you get the license, you got to pay the man who know the man who know the man who know the other man who know the other man. Culture. Amen. You go to immigration for a visa to travel. You got to know a man. I'm telling you, when I was growing up, and you don't you don't know a man, you ain't going anywhere. Hallelujah. But with us, we just have to know the man Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, you know the man Christ Jesus. You don't have to know a man who know a man who know a man. One man paid it all. You don't pay him. He pay you. He paid it all. 
Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts. The God of the armies. You see, Jesus is an army all by himself. Do you hear what I'm saying? He's an army all by himself. The God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast devoured. See, we need to know how to talk to the devil. We need to talk, know how to talk to the enemy. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. No one can stand up to the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus told his disciples, in my name you will tread, on, help me, on scorpions. You will trample them under your feet. The name of Jesus will protect you. He says, you know, if you drink any, help me somebody, deadly thing, it shall not hurt you. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. In my name, you shall heal the sick. In my name, you shall heal the sick. Praise the name of the Lord. We need to know what works. We need to know what works. The name of Jesus. People have been calling on the name of Jesus. Let me tell you, I've called on the name of Jesus so many times and he has gotten me out of some predicament. Amen. One thing I learned how to stay alive, even in my sleep. I don't know about you, and I'm not going to share the testimony again, but I want you to know that there are many times in my sleep I've had to call on the name of Jesus. I call Sister Sonia, and I get up out of it. I'm like, you didn't hear me calling you? She's like, no. Nope. But what kept me was the name of Jesus and some terrible things have happened to people in their sleep. I know it's true. I know it's true. Amen? If you can cry in your sleep, if you can wake up crying in your sleep, what makes you think that stuff can happen to you in your sleep? Are you with me? But the name of Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Thank you, Lord. I close with a story I've shared before, a testimony. My wife and I, we were driving back from Florida. And my daughter was driving. I was in the front seat. And my daughter was driving. I had my granddaughter kind of on my chest. My wife was in the back. And the Holy Spirit says, give Alexis to her grandmother. Because she was sleeping on my chest. And I love my granddaughter. Love my grandchildren. But this granddaughter was the first. And I gave her to Sister Sonia, I'm like, go, go, go to Grandma, Grammy. And I, my chair was reclined, and I dozed off again. And I heard my daughter say, Dad, where's this truck going? And I'm in a reclined seat. And when I look, this tractor trailer changed lane and came right in front of my daughter, and she was going under the belly of that tractor trailer. When I, that's all I saw was the car heading under the belly of the tractor trailer. And I grabbed the wheel of that car. Amen. I know exactly the spot. Just approaching the Virginia border from North Carolina. And I yank the wheel. Praise the Lord. And I heard a loud explosion. The car shot across the street. I saw that. Oncoming traffic. And then came back to the other side. 
and it spun around like eternity. And that's when I heard the explosion, bow! And I'm like, we're all dead. I look in the back. My wife was, in the name of Jesus, 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 in the name of Jesus. So while I'm turning the wheel and all of that, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. And when the car settled itself, the tire was completely blown out, one of the tire. And I saw the tractor trailer, the guy had pulled over to the side. So I guess he saw where we didn't get hit. And he just started going about his business. I was so shaken up. And the Lord took the car off the road and put it right on the median strip. Amen. And we were there. My wife was, my daughter had passed out when the truck was going in front of her. And the hand of the, on the wheel wasn't just my hand, it was the hand of the Lord. Amen. After we calmed down, I came to, uh, the, the Holy Spirit told me, go pick up 12 stones. And I've had those 12 stones. And let this be a memorial. Oh, you and your family were spared. Because you called on my name. I'm telling you a true story. Praise the name of the Lord. And when I looked at the car tire, one of the tires was completely blown out. That's how the car stopped. And I said, what we're going to do, we cannot drive back to Boston on this little tiny spear. We put it on. And we drove to find a gas station. Everything was closed. Every gas station was darkness. And we didn't want a chance coming back. And there were no hotels where we were. And I found one gas station that was open. And I asked the guy if he had a tire could put on the one that was blown out. Listen to this now. He says, no, I don't. But let me take a look at it. So he went in the trunk. Guy took it out. He's like, I don't see any blow out here. It was flat, but he's like, I don't, see, I don't see any thread coming out of this. Let me pump it up. He pumped it up. He put it in the water, not a bubble. I drove, up, he put the tire on. I drove that thing for over a year or maybe two years. Don't tell me there's no power in the name of Jesus. Don't tell me the name of Jesus means nothing. Don't tell me the name of Jesus has not been proven. For he has proven himself in my life. I'm here today because of the name of Jesus. He's an on time God. I'm not trying to give you a lucky charm. I'm not asking you to pay me any money. Some people would use that testimony and ask people, stand to your feet with a thousand dollars. I'm not asking you to follow me. Go anywhere. Sister Sonia, you follow me, okay? <laughs> Please. I need you. <laughs> Amen. So I'm not looking for followers. That some people follow a man. One testimony. And now that man becomes Jesus. I'm telling you the truth. Be careful of people with these stories. Things happen elsewhere, but never to them. Always happen over there. This happened right here. My life, my wife, 
my family. Hallelujah. So I'm just telling you today, take the name of Jesus with you. Would you do that? That's all I'm asking you to do. When you leave this place, wherever you go during the course of the week, the weeks ahead, the months ahead, the years ahead, take the name of Jesus with you. There's a song that says, take the name of Jesus with you. Child of sorrows and of woes, he will joy and comfort keep you. Take him wherever you go. Amen. Would you remember that today? Won't you stand to your feet? We're going to just close out our service. Thank you for allowing me to preach this word to you today. Use what works. Use what has been proven. Amen. And let me just let you know, we started this ministry 20 years ago. A lot of ministries have come and failed. Spring of Water still marches on. During COVID, we remain. Turn around and you'll see that God is filling the seats. The church has been tested. This church has been tried. This church has proven, hallelujah, to withstand every test and every storm. Don't let people move you. Are you with me? Don't let people move you. As long as the name of Jesus Christ is preached here, stay where you are planted. Don't run after a man. Don't run after a woman. Don't run after any individual. If God has blessed you here, stay here. Amen. I got to make it real, church. Hallelujah. And musicians, worship team, when you sing, sing about Jesus. Amen. No nursery rhymes. Don't do it the way the world does it and think you have to conform. Amen. Just, just, just sing who Jesus is. And preacher, when you preach, tell them the story of Jesus. You ain't got to make up some story. Tell them the story. Tell them what Jesus said. Preachers, tell them what Jesus did. Preachers, tell them how Jesus saved. And let's leave some of the other stuff out the way. Amen. And we do that. You preach Jesus Christ and him crucified. The church will remain. You lift up his name. He'll keep you. He'll heal you. He'll deliver you. He saves. Amen. The Bible says we're saved by no other name. Help me somebody. But by the name of Jesus, by the name of Jesus, Jesus, there's just something about that name. Oh, let's sing it out. Master, Savior, Savior, Jesus, Jesus, like the fragrance after the rain Jesus 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 let all heaven and earth proclaim kings and kingdoms kings and kingdoms shall all pass away but there is something about, about that, name. that name oh what one more time name? jesus 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 jesus, jesus. jesus. there's, there's a something, something about that, that name, name. Master, master savior jesus Never play guns after the rain. Jesus. Oh, yes. Jesus. 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 
us, little thunder, and earth proclaim. Oh, kings and kingdoms shall all pass away. But there is something about that name. About. There is something about. There's something about. There is something about. There is something about. There is something about. There is something about that name. What's that name? What's that name? Proclaim the name of. What an exciting message today. By now I know you are equipped, you are ready, hallelujah, to take back everything the devil has taken from you, to conquer your enemies, because today you have learned about the weapon of your warfare that is mighty in God for the pulling down of strongholds, weapons that have been proven, tested, and tried. Weapons that will guarantee you victory. Remember, the name of Jesus Christ is one of those powerful weapons that has been proven time and time again. Go now and use the name of Jesus Christ to conquer your enemy, to heal the sick, and to bring deliverance to those who are bound. God bless you. Have a great day.